Oh, it's 20%. Stewie 2K. I was 20% at the Dallas event. There's no discussion, Maui. Don't make, make, don't make me make a statement without verbally saying it. So you're saying you're better than Hooksy. Are you just saying you're better than Hooksy? We're watching a Stewie 2K demo now. We're watching a Stewie 2K demo now. So now we watch the we watch the Hooksy demo, and now we compare it to the Hoosy. We watch the Hoosy demo, and now we watch now we watch the Stewie 2K demo. The fact I'm in a discussion under Hooksy, whether I'm mechanically better or mentally better, it's absurd. There's no there okay, let's just say this. There's no there shouldn't be a question. There shouldn't be no question. But we're only getting facts. We're only pulling up the facts now. We're only giving the facts now as we watch this, as you're at 20% of your true power. And we're gonna watch we can watch one for one you playing Vitality. Now we watch you playing Vitality in a grand final, and we watch you can't pull facts. I've been away for two and a half years. <laughs> Hold on, let me. Okay, there we go. Now we watch this, and I don't show my C drive. I don't show my C drive here. And then we, and then we say, what did we like better? I'll be honest with you completely. Okay. I'm listening. I knew G2 was an opportunity. I couldn't pass up on a tier one event as a stand-in. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Dude, I literally only wanted to play mainly because of Nico. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What? I didn't even know who Monacy was. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You Shut up. Shut up. That doesn't make any sense at all. What are you talking about? What? That's how much I haven't watched any of the other- No! Dude, no! You can't even- They can't- <laughs> That's true. What are you talking- I only watched Complexity vs. FaZe, Sydney CS2- No! And then you already performed better and winning- More winning Counter-Strike than Hooksy? <laughs> but I love the kid first day of practice. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god, this- <laughs> He didn't even know Monacy's aura. And that's how he caught my attention. <laughs> I found out more and more about him. Dude, you had to play on Mon- I had to, I- Personally, me, I had to play against Monacy at LAN to really, uh, understand his value as a play- No. Wait a second, which of these was it? Was it the- Ah, oh, shit. I might- I might- I might upload the wrong- Or I might start watching the wrong one here. But we're gonna watch the Stewie 2K- But he was a pleasure and one of the best teammates, honestly. Dude, I bet. I bet. He's cracked. He's like- I can't even say the word cracked for most offers in tier 1 CS anymore. <clears throat> but Monacy is definitive cracked in the dictionary. My god. Alright. His IQ is what surprised me instantly. I didn't even know the shit around him. Take it for it as an image. That's insane! He loves the game and sees it a lot like I do. Oh, why is my cursor on there? Alright, wait. Crosshair reviews really quick. Crosshair reviews. Okay. Crosshair reviews. First of all, what res? What res do you play at? What res do you play at, Stewie? We'll watch it. We'll watch it in your res. I'll watch it in your res for. I don't do that very often, but. My language in the game without introduction. He's the first. So he he understood what how the way you play. Get Stewie. Get Stewie two K on G two today. Get Stewie two K on G two. Stewie G two K. G Stu, he dies 4v5, 120 in there. For example, Nico has IG yelling, he dies 4v5, 120 in the round. Nico, guys, take short and do blank. Monacy, Nico, you don't have to call a strat. We can punish, get map control, and we can make them make mis. <laughs> that's actually. Whoa, that's nasty. That's actually nasty that that Monacy that Monacy does that. Let 
Wait a second. Let me. Can I DM you? Can we just talk? Can we just talk a little bit about this? Let me get my. Hold on. Yo. Yo, what's good? I'm just watching your demos now. Yeah, I tuned in. I saw you guys. I saw the title. All right. I was just seeing what you got. What you were up to. Word. Let's. Uh. Okay. So, to talk this more a personal about interview. I mean. I mean. I guess so. I guess it is now. But uh, uh, hit me. Okay. So with with the calling at with the calling in Dallas, how much? Who was like saying what percentage? Like who's saying what? How much? Oh, it's probably like 100% Nico. Um, I'm not saying that he didn't call. He definitely did call, but a lot of the... I've been out for so long that I kind of just let him do their thing, but it kind of seemed the same. His calls were very simple. It was very more together, more kind of puggy, but at the same time, less st strategical side of things. Um, but a lot of it was Nico. I think at one point, I... I mean, I've been playing against him for so long that at some point, um, I already knew that the, our natural styles kind of complemented each other um, in general. But hold on, my talk key refreshes the page. What? Well, huh? Yeah, um, I felt like we complemented each other naturally already, and in the beginning, I was trying to suggest what i thought was better um i do that naturally as a player anyways and i try not to step on any like any areas that i shouldn't be stepping in so i kind of feel the vibe a little bit see if that's what nika wanted and kind of see if that's what he prefers from me and in the beginning it was very hard like i can tell he's like kind of open to listening to it but at the same time he was kind of rejecting it but indirectly rejecting it so i kind of would take steps back and I realized that he kind of just wants me to be a soldier, like be in there and just do as they say and kind of not add anything extra. And in the beginning, I didn't feel comfortable doing that, like not saying anything. And I kind of just adjusted to it because I didn't want to be a stand-in that kind of just ruins their, their chemistry and everything. But in the beginning, I was just going with the flow, kind of listening to what they needed. And as the tournament started, it felt like super uncomfortable for me because during free time, like the Bosnian players have a lot to say, so I tried not to cut them off. And at the very end, it would just be like Nico saying, hey, let's do C9, and I don't even know what C9 is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then a lot of times I'll ask, like, hey, like, what should I be doing? And he'll generally just say, hey, you're, you're going here. But it kind of affected the way I played because I didn't know exactly what we were doing, and I'm the first guy in. So yeah, yeah. it kind of confused me a lot. And at some point, I told him, like, hey, like, you got you to gotta have some trust in me. And what I do, and like I know how to play this stuff, so it's not always gonna be on you, and we can like work stuff out together because that's how the game works. And eventually, as the tournament went on deeper and deeper, the trust kind of came along the way, and I think he kind of loosened up a little bit and kind of put more trust in everybody. But regardless, the question he, he called most of the tournament, he called everything to be honest. I just think that the best teams in the world don't. It's not like one person micromanaging everything, one person calling everything. But even in the games, like at some point, I stopped like even trying to question it. Like I just think like, hey, like I like his, I like his style. I know he's good. I know he's smart. So at the end, like instead of questioning it, just do as he says until like the very end of the game, and we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. But even the game against Liquid, I think the very last round, he didn't even tell me I was missing the smokes, and I don't even know how I was missing the smokes to be honest, because I threw him the same exact way in the grand final. But the smokes were missing. He only said it once, but apparently I missed it like a bunch of times. And the last round of uh, going against Liquid, he I missed the smokes, and it was like 30 seconds left. He just said, hey, you guys got to find a way to go down vent. And like without question, like everyone just started flashing mini, and everyone just started running down vent. Yeah. But I think that's like why we did a lot of, we had a lot of success. Like we didn't really question the calls. We kind of just trusted it, and just in the moment, we just kind of went with it. Okay, that's cool. So, how much time did you have to practice with him before the actual tournament? Um, 
So I had like a week of real practice um, with them. Um, I was playing a lot in North America. Well, I played all of it in North America, but we played. They started around like 3 a.m. my time, probably finished around like 8 a.m. Yeah. And then it was a little tough because in my head, I knew that 160 ping is going to be very tough to practice, but it's more about kind of getting the chemistry inside the server. And it doesn't really matter about the kills, but there were a lot of times, maybe like later in the week, that we'd practice the same map again and it's hard for me to get any kills and we get like run over. And I think people like lose their confidence because. I mean, result oriented. Yeah. Some people are result oriented and they see that it's failing pretty hard, so they think it's bad. But in my head, the whole time, I was like, dude, just wait till you guys come to Dallas. Like, I'll have five ping and, you know, things will be a lot different than what it looks. Yeah. And that, and that panned out well. Wait, I wait, think. Okay. I want to. Right, the thing you said, the thing you said in my chat earlier, I need you to reiterate that. Like, you you wanted to play because you knew Nico, but you didn't know much about Monacy when you, when you found this opportunity. Well, I didn't really keep up with the game that much. Like, it's not because I didn't want to. It's just how I am. Like, even the only tournament I ever really stood in the stands or, like, even spectated, like, all of it was probably Major Columbus. And that was my first, like, actual major. But a lot of times when I'm, like, watching, it's not that I don't enjoy watching. I just kind of get this feeling that, like, you know, this is what I'm, like, aiming to be, where I'm aiming to be, and, like, this isn't something I want to be a part of, like, from the crowd. It's something that I want to be, like, on stage, and, you know, like, I'm a part of what everyone's watching. But that's just, like, the competitive side of things. <clears throat> but from honesty, like, I heard of the name. I've heard of his name a few times, but I never, it never really took my attention to a point where I'm researching the guy or anything. I really haven't kept up with like CS events. Like CS events will happen and there's so many events nowadays that I'll still just be playing face it all throughout the events, not knowing like who's playing, who's the best team in the world. I walked into that event not knowing that like Mouse Sports was the best team in the world and like uh, all these players names. Like I think I walked past Wonderful in the elevator. He literally said hi to me and I just said hey and I didn't even know who that was. <laughs> I know it sounds disrespectful, but honestly I was just in my own like focus and like it was just literally G2 <laughs> and me and that's it. That's funny. Right? So, you, so I feel like the old yeah. guards, man, like they can't they come back, they don't know who any of the new guys are. And I was the new guy, now I'm the old guy. Yeah, the the, the literally he don't know you lil bro moments. <laughs> I mean I have like a lot of the like Kobe Bryant mentality, like I don't really like talk to anyone. Like Sui, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Sui, I think. Shuhei. Shuhei. Yeah, yeah. And on Mouse Sports, I yeah. forgot what he asked me. Very general question, very like friendly, like before the game started. I think it was something like, hey, like how does it feel to be back and like playing on LAN? And I saw the message, but I literally just ignored him in the server. But I feel like that's like, I mean, it just sends a message pretty much like, I, I'm not fucking with you. Like, I'm not here to talk to you. Like, I'm here to just win this shit and just leave. <laughs> how was working with taz um not he's, gonna lie he's kind of new he's kind of new as a coach he's kind of new i mean i don't want them to hate me for saying this or like getting flack for saying it but i'll say it like i think when i joined it was a little hard to really understand what's going on because i mean i'm from the outside and i don't have much information on this team and i really only know Dico um with the history that we have yeah and when the first day I got there in practice, like you can tell, it, not many people are talking. It feels a little tense in here, and like there's not a whole lot of fun going on. And mm. when people go over things, it's almost like a military type vibe, like where you got your general, your general is explaining to you the day, and like he's running down the the agenda of the day, and he's providing examples and everything. Everyone's watching, and it's like almost like. It's one man show and like no one's really enjoying their time here. It kind of feels like a nine to five. People are clocking in, clocking out. Jeez, and I know like the vibes like that, like it's not a real team. And there, there's going to be times where people will not say things because they can't and like they feel like they don't have the room to. So like when there's not like a whole lot of um, like, I guess, fun in the air, then like it doesn't really push people to do better or like make them say things that they should be saying openly without feeling like they shouldn't be, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's very militant, and mm -hmm. people are, they don't want to be the one that messes up, and so people are just not bringing things up.
Exactly. Oh, wow. So I felt like in the first day, like when I felt that, I tried to, I mean, I tried to throw in a few jokes here and there, try to throw it in as smoothly as possible. And like, it was a very tough crowd. And then Moni, I can tell Monty was trying to lighten the mood with me and like all those things. And that's why I think I meshed pretty well with him. Like he, I don't know, he surprised me a lot. He's the one player that definitely surprised me a lot. And I've never seen a player like that. And I never said like, I, this is the best opera in the world that I've ever seen. And he's like the first player to make me say it. So. He's better than Skadoodle? Damn. I mean, that's not even a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn. Okay. Uh, so, okay, how did, how did the opportunity even come your way, though? Like, because obviously we're playing a little bit with Legacy here and there, and then... Did, did, who hit you up? Um, so, I think this might be a... Um... This might be something that I caused. Wait, oh shit, I exited base it one sec. Um, it might be a problem that I caused for myself because I never really put myself out there openly. Um, at the same time, Legacy asked me to play because I'm still pretty close with Ricardo, um, one of the CEOs from Legacy Dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, he... He messaged me right at the major when they got eliminated and they were saying that hey like we're making roster changes we're also moving to na and right now we need a fifth to help us with the na region and all that stuff and i knew cold was pretty much out right away but um i didn't really ask anything i kind of just stood in just to help them and it wasn't really like anything that I had intended that was aside from that, I kind of just wanted to help. And since I'm in NA anyways, I don't have to like really go anywhere, move. I figured it's going to be a fun opportunity since all I do is play face it. It's been a while since I played like any leagues. So I stood in for them a little bit. And at some point they found a replacement that they were comfortable with from Brazil. And Ricardo came to me and said like, hey, like G2's asking for you to stand in for this event. And that's pretty much how the opportunity came. Um, they never spoke to me directly. I know Nico, yeah, he never really reached out. Um, all throughout like these times, like he's messaged me before, but never to like really play. It was just more so words of encouragement um, on the side. He never really stayed in touch, but that's how the opportunity came. And also just to answer, answer your question about Taz, I think he's um, a pretty good coach. I think he is very level-headed and I think I saw the more so the bad side of how things were towards the end of their towards the end towards Dallas I I'd say um cuz there were times where I didn't know what was going on as my first few days first few days there and I can tell when Taz is speaking there's not like a whole lot of like real attention on what he's saying and I understand that sometimes when coaches say things present things and all those things um, like sometimes it just doesn't make sense, you know, like their strategical side of things and inside the server, they're the things they say, it doesn't make sense, but I mean, we know it's coming with good intentions, but the example that he was giving, I kind of felt that where it's like, this isn't the right fit, honestly, but it kind of felt like not a lot of people were really giving him that chance to like really speak freely and not be judged. So in my eyes, I felt like some things have definitely built along the ways when I wasn't there. And there's a lot of tension where it does feel like people aren't listening to each other. But it's almost like just shoved under the under the rug and like they don't really address it, which is like very unhealthy for a team. But that would be my suggestion or uh, my guess of what's going on. Because you can tell like it's it was something that was bothering them. But throughout the tournament, I think I got to see like the better side of everybody. Mm -hmm. especially as the team tournament went better so i mean i think they're a great group of guys i mean every team has like their issues and it's all about like just working working out the issues so they've obviously benched nexus since you've left uh what can you say about him as a player um well from the outside look i'm not even gonna lie to you like focusing so much on nico and monesty like from the very start um, my attention on Hunter and Nexo was almost like non-existent. Oh, okay. um, so I focused a lot on them and just making, cause I knew they were like the heart of the team and a lot of the 
things they will come up with and what they say will pretty much it's how it's gonna go so i knew um, my attention was on them mostly and a lot of people were giving shit to nexa and like i'm not gonna lie to you like until the finals i didn't watch like any of the highlights or any matches back or like really anything throughout the tournament and until the finals i didn't know how bad nexa was actually performing until someone came up to me and said like hey you didn't see him die in the molly like two times and i didn't even know he died in the molly two times because right. i know some rounds there were like people won't know it or see it like there are times where i remember there was a round where we got ecoed and on inferno and uh next was actually the last guy a and he was in pit and he got shot on the side of the head with a glock from long or arch yeah, yeah. and actually the calm in game was yeah they're both there like they're both lane or whatever and then like he got shot on the side so oh. i know it looks kind of bad but like i think there are a lot of other factors that play that people don't see or hear that might cause him to perform worse but i'm not excusing his performance or anything i'm not speaking for him i just think that it, it went unnoticed on my end and i guess just because we were pulling out the wins it i didn't really see it but um as a player i think he he is that player that will He's like the clutcher of the team. Like he pulls out rounds that like are very big that people don't see. It changes the game entirely. And I think he did that for us a lot, especially in the Falcons game. I mean, to start off the event, it's very important to start off the event like that. And like for him to pull off a 1v3, it sets the tone strong. And I mean, he did that on other maps too. So it's really hard to take away all the credit from him and just like point out all the mistakes that he makes, you know? Right, right. Okay, so and when you... Yeah, so you said you were like 20% at this though. So like, where are you headed? Well, right now I don't really have like a concrete answer. I only say 20% because like what people say about my performance, like I'm surprised that this event, I mean, this event was almost like a miracle. It was like just all magic in in a sense. Um, like even the public view of me like I didn't, I came into the event like almost like with the mindset of like, I don't really give a shit about anybody from the outside and I don't care what they say. Cause I was already expecting like, you know, a balance of like, hey, and some love. And a lot of people talking about my performance, blah, blah, blah. And, like they're not taking in the factors of, I've been away from tier one, two and a half years. And not just that, like I'm getting slotted into a tier one event with no practice against any tier one teams. and. I, I factor this in just because I know myself as a player, if I, it's kind of like the gym, you get back into that tier one, the repetition of practicing against them, seeing like people's decision making and like, what's the natural like reactions of certain strats and all that. And if I can get repetition with that, like I'll pick that up super fast. And I feel like I didn't get a chance to do that. And maybe after the loss against Vitality, I kind of just put my own foot down and just say like, hey, like I know how to play this game and like I got to start trusting my instincts instead of thinking I'm behind and everything just kind of fell into place itself. Like I felt like I had my own voice eventually and even before the finals, like we played Anubis again against Vitality and my experience playing with Hunter on the same site, like I try to suggest things where I feel like we get stuck within the round and a lot of times he's open to hearing it and it's all agreed upon, but when the time comes, it's not being executed, it's not being ran or talked about, and we kind of just run off doing our own things, and it looks very bad. So I think in the finals, that's where I say, hey, like this is a point of, of time where we get stuck, and we got stuck against them on the first game, so what exactly do you want to do now? This is my idea. And again, the same response came, and instead of just letting it go on the fly, like during the game, I just started voicing it and making sure I'm saying what I think is better to do and just kind of getting everybody on the same page. And I think that's like a lot of the things that they're missing. What, what, and, what did you, what did you say? What do you say they should do? If you don't mind. Um, well, I don't know if you're going to go through it, but like if you're watching Anubis, the first game that we play, uh -huh. um, there's a lot, I look at the rounds, like there's stages in the round. So like, for example, there's like the step, step one is like from a, to point Z of the round and you kind of like build throughout the round that way and get prepared that way, right? So you never know what's to come and until it comes, you kind of dwindle down all the options and reactions that you have. So Anubis, first of all, is like a map that I didn't play officially ever until like this event. So I had, I felt like I had a lot to learn 
And even in practice, like, I approached it as, like, shit, like, this is definitely different from what I'm used to playing. And, like, I got to just take a step back and, like, really observe and learn. And I, it took me, like, a while until it clicked than other maps. But I think at the event, I felt after seeing how people play when it matters the most, it gave me a good representation of um, how I need to react on this map. And I play, like, a big site, which is B and... It's like one of the sites that everyone always hits, so it's very dangerous. But um, anyways, like I was learning this map from like scratch um, in a team setting. And throughout my time playing with Hunter, like I realized that E-Box, what we call it E-Box, they yeah. call it Pop. Um, that side of the map, like people will come at all times at some point in the round in A-Main. That's what I learned from it. And it's kind of like the map where you go back and forth and this is how you like really mess with rotations. So, the knowing they come is like a given, and the reaction is to trade utility and kind of like retake it if they take it, which is normal. But I think for us on G two, th that's like the point of the round where we retake it, and after that, that's where we literally get stuck on our CT sides, and we struggled a lot against Vitality the first game we played them, and right before the final, I was kind of thinking about the game, and that's the information that I got together where that point in the round, like this is where we get lost as a team because we try to guess where they're going instead of actually playing to play the game and like just getting the info and reacting off what's in front of us. And if you watch all our games, like even on dust twos against like the ones that we lost, like that's literally how teams play when things are wrong. Like you kind of gravitate towards sound, um, steps planned and you look kind of lost and like we look very lost on those two on one of the games and that's exactly like what happened and it happens a lot on Anubis so when the finals came <laughs> I just told Hunter sorry I kind of went in circles sidetracked I'm sorry no no I, you're teabagging someone in game that's why I laughed it wasn't oh, okay. what you said <laughs> I'm just watching the demo so yeah now you're good um but yeah just to cut it short um I before the finals I kind of just replayed everything in my head and out of that and i just told hunter like hey like once we get to this point in the round i think we like i really want to just keep going for aggression and like i'll go i'll push b main i'll be the first guy that does it and like you can either follow me or you can bait me it doesn't even matter and i had ideas like either push b main or we need to like really fight outside e box and i can tell his response that, of fighting outside e box was like um he felt uncomfortable and i just pretty much just slotted in saying like, hey, like, you can flash for me, like, I'll go and do it. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, like, I'm not afraid to do it, but I think we have to do it. And he kind of just acknowledged it. And during the game in the finals, like, he was having a tough game against them. I think he had, like, two kills at one point, and, like, he was very in his own head, actually. And I can, like, kind of tell through his body language. And I was trying to just tell him, like, yo, it's all good. Like, don't worry about, like, any of that. And kind of just stay focused on the game. And I can tell on the CT side... He was doing that aggression like he one round he even like naded the smoke and ran out there and tried to kill like Zywu right outside e-box and like th that's the stuff that we need as on the ct side because we struggled a lot against them and it was just, when i saw it happen in the moment like i was actually very impressed that like the trust was there so you and you and hunter developed some chemistry throughout all of it it was pretty sick actually i think it was a little tough to play like, I'm not gonna lie, I think it was a little tough to play with Hunter because um, the language barrier, first of all, like, I think it shows with him specifically, but it's not as bad as um, players, uh, for example, like the Brazilian teams that I've played on before. Like, it's been tougher um, in the past. I think with Hunter, the tough part is that he also likes to decide things on the run, and I'm like that too. Like, I'm very um, intuitive and... I got to see like what's in front of us first and he's like that so it kind of benefits me because there's less direction that ne is needed and he's more decisive for himself but at the same time he makes a lot of like hasty decisions that almost look rookie but that's kind of how it's going to look if it doesn't like work out his way because mm -hmm. in the games he kind of like for example eco rounds instead of having like your set idea of how to play and like the best percentage he kind of fills it out and if he feels like he wants to push it he's just gonna like push it on the uh on the spot so 
it kind of like backfires sometimes. Like it backfired a little bit in some of the matches, but hey, man, if it works, what can you say? So after this happened, I mean, like you had this big like bout with Richard about the game, and he because he was saying some stuff about like your stats weren't good or whatever, and you were defending yourself on Twitter. Like, I think, yeah, I think Richard probably is kind of like. In this case, he was sort of epitomizing the the typical online hater, and you responded to him like, "What do you think of people that like? What do you like? You, what's you my thoughts to, on it? Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Um, well, this was my honest like approach to why I even responded. Like, I don't have anything against Richard Lewis whatsoever. Like, I never had like any bad interactions. Never had any bad comments about him. Like, we never really had any bad like interactions ever, to be honest. Like, the only interaction that I can clearly ever remember with him for the first time, one of the first moments was at E-League Season 1, when they first... This was not even, like, E-League Major or anything like that. It was the first season of E-League, and he was there. And I just remember after that event, like, all the talent was there, like, Sue, um, like, the old NIP that everyone knows was, like, this, that NIP. And, like, it was way back. So the first time I met Richard Lewis was there, and... I don't even remember how we got to this point of the night, but like it was just me and Richard Lewis like in his room. Like we were just like all end of the event, like we were all talking. Like I ended up in his room, and like Sue was just about to come up as well. And I just had like a moment to myself with him, and he was just like giving me props, giving me praise, saying that like I'm doing a good job, like I'm a good kid, like I got to get ahead of my shoulders, blah blah blah, and like a lot of words of encouragement. And like he didn't even have to do that. I don't know why he did that. But I always took it as like a good uh, way to start a relationship, I guess, like having it that strong. And since that point, like there was never any interaction with Richard Lewis. The next one that I really remember is one in Sweden, the major, a few years ago. And it was just, I think he might have been there too. Like, he, I think it was just a dinner and like um, he was there with Oren. Like, were you there? No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't at this one. Okay. Um, we we just all went to dinner. It was like me, Zeus, Ricardo, and like a, a bunch of the talent and Richard Lewis and them. And like we greeted each other. We said, "Hey, blah blah blah." And like that that was pretty much it. And like since the EG like video that he made, honestly, when he made it, I also thought like, "Yo, like he's just doing his job." I guess like he can say all the shit he wants. Like I don't blame him. Uh, he's doing what he's got to do. And I never even like went out of my way to like really message him about it. Like I just kind of took it for what it is. And I never like had any like disrespect towards him. And then after like this event, when I saw him make the tweet, and like pretty much he's just trying to do everything he can to take all the credit away, not from just myself, like even from like G two. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you don't have to do that. Like, give credit where credit is due. Like, you don't have to give it to me, but at least like you know, show some respect for like the team at least. And I just respect. I responded in a way where like he's actually entitled to his own opinion, and like I respect it. Like if he thinks I'm bad, blah blah blah, whatever it is, go ahead. But like at least give some credit to the team. You don't have to give credit to me. And I pretty much told him that like, look, I respect everything that he has to say, and like there's no really anything malicious. But in all honesty, like the field that I know stuff and know my shit is CS, and I'm gonna tell him that like, look, you don't know shit about CS, and that's the honest truth. And he took it personal and called me narcissistic, and I think he's projecting, but <laughs> that, that's pretty much it. I kind of just like, all right, like, he literally just cannot keep the level of maturity, so I kind of just dropped it. Like, he wins. Like, whatever he says, he wins, bro. Like, I just kind of left the conversation from there. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, have you seen any other stuff, like... I mean, with, with, I think with Richard in general, I think that, like, when it comes to G2, he has had a lot of thoughts over the last few years, and you, you're, unfortunately for that, even though... I just got caught in the crossfire, it, huh? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's had a lot of, he's had a lot of different thoughts, mostly about the roster without you, obviously, and then, because uh, I think one thing that's, like, a prevailing narrative in our space right now is that, like, if you, since you haven't been tapped into it entirely, is just that, like, like, Monacy's arguably the best player in the world it's him and donk and then nico's still a top 10 player and so the majority of credit for every g2 win is just it's just simply going to go to them so oh yeah i mean i i understood that from the start um i mean I, honestly when i say like i didn't know much about him like i heard of the name i heard of like what like the basic talks around him 
I mean, I didn't know it was like to that level of like, I mean, even like Donk, for example, when I came back to CS2 and people started talking about him before he had that Katavisa event, um, when people were talking about him in my stream and like, I just came back. So I didn't even know like who Donk was. I actually thought he was just like a streamer, like a new streamer on the block. And like, he was like, yeah. everyone's talking about him. People were asking me like, when am I going to play with Donk and like all these things. So I thought he was like a content creator. And I didn't really look into it. And once he had that event in Katowice, I was like, oh, this is Donk. And then Monacy, like I heard of the name. I've heard him that he's from Navi Academy. But that's kind of like the gist of it. Like I knew he was an opera. I knew he was like really good at what he does. But I didn't know like the talks around him were at that level, you know? Yeah. So yeah. going to like the team, I was like, all right, like I know Monacy's an opera. I know he's good. But like the main focus was like, you know, I've been wanting to play with Nico for a while. And I think we complement each other. So. A lot of things were just like focused around him. For people you played against, was there anybody where you really felt their presence in the server? Um, I think there was like in I forgot. I think it was Zaiwu who said it, where it was like about simple or whoever. Where when you play against these players, it's like you're not playing to play against these players. You're playing to play against the team, and I I think when. The game is actually live and it's going on like a lot of the stuff that's happening is like that like you're focused on the team and like you don't even notice that it's simple killing you or like it's twist killing you and i think a lot of times even against liquid like twist had a very good series against us but like i tell people that like his presence was not felt like you don't like when you step into the servers in these games, like there are times where someone will kill you and you're just like, holy shit, like you look up, yeah, I mean, that's simple material. Like you understand like the way you die and like who it's from and like it kind of caught you by surprise of how fast he killed you. And like yeah. these players have like that factor, but they don't have like this factor where like shit, bro, like he's taking over the game. Like he's like the one to do it. Like he's that guy, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of times, like, you'll press tab and, like, all of a sudden he has 20, 25, 30 frags and you're just like, shit, like, he's owning. But, like, you don't even remember him getting, like, 30 ever. Right, right. So, you, okay, okay. Was there any, okay, when, I guess the teams then, because you played a, practically all, or most of the best teams in the world, like, which one felt the toughest? The toughest? I mean, I played against Astralis when they were, like, the best team in the world in the run. And... Okay. I feel like they were the toughest team by far just because they were they revolutionized the game and they made it evolve to a different meta and like made people have to Oh no it lagged. Yo hello. But yo 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 it, it, it lagged. Yeah, lagged sorry. I, when I was having game it, it kinda oh, okay. lagged. Um Yeah, but when I play like you don't recognize those things and sorry what was your question yeah yeah follow? like for for the toughest team you play i mean you're saying it's astralis but like about the teams at the tournament was anybody like oh at this tournament particularly uh, hard um i'm not gonna lie 9z was definitely the hardest tournament or the team of the tournament and it was something that was expected because um i felt like the normal teams that were there for example like phase that we played mouse sports um them being the best opponents statistically like, I didn't feel like they were like that, maybe because I'm standing in and they don't know what to expect out of G2. But the toughest team we played by far was definitely Vitality and 9Z. But the 9Z game, I think it was just because of how the event was going. Um, I mean, you got to put yourself in their shoes. Like, they are not really familiar with that uh, point in time in the tournament, like being in that position. And just being on stage is like a big bonus for them and having this factor of nothing to lose and also going against the crowd i mean it could still be beneficial in that way for them as a team and give them that momentum and i felt like even before the game we were all saying to each other like look this is gonna be the hardest part of this is gonna be the hardest opponent throughout the entire tournament just because they're like that caliber where like they're happy to be there. They feel like it's good enough and like they also have like absolutely nothing to lose and they will just play the best they can play. And yeah, it was tough. Like we, th all throughout that series, we were all like the frustrations were like all time high and it was very hard to like reset everything. And that's crazy. Like, I, I get it. I get the mentality behind it. Like if, if it's 9Z, 
they're not gonna feel the choke like other teams. They're not gonna feel the pressure. They're not gonna. They're they're just gonna play their game because they are like they're just happy to even be there at all. I mean that, and also like I've been there before where like these teams like they play like a way where when you're like the top five team in the world and you play a team like this, like you think like, hey, what they're doing is so stupid. Like everything they do doesn't make sense. It's like very yeah. scrimmy and like very gimmicky and it's not going to work all the time. But like, that's the thing. Like the, those mistakes are going to make you extra frustrated and cause like extra frustrations and make everything seem more amplified. And like it did that to us. And like, it was very hard to reset. And honestly, I was, after that game, I was like, man, like I'm just happy that this game is fucking over. <laughs> <laughs> How was uh? How'd you think the crowd was at Dallas? I mean, you've been in front of a lot of big ones, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I try to say that, but like, I think it's got to the point where, like, I really can't put any words to describe like what type of event this was for me. Cause I, if I really had to say it to myself, like, this is probably like the best event of my career by far. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually, because I mean, the storylines in itself and. I was re-watching like the tournament on my stream and I think one of the casters were saying like uh, there was like a tech pause and I was trying to get the crowd going and he was like yeah the power of one man's wrist and honestly like when he said that I felt that like pretty heavily because it was almost like I was kind of scared to like even mess with the crowd because how much I controlled it and it felt like the power was unreal like it was too scary. Like I was too scared to like use that power or like overdo it, and maybe because the crowd was so much like closer to the stage. Yeah. I remember the first day we played, and I tried like messing with the crowd. It almost felt like you're in front of like a hundred foot speaker, max power, and like you just play the loudest video you can, and like it blows you away. Like it makes you fly away. Like that's literally how I felt. What compared to Boston though? Like, um, how's that energy different? I really can't compare it to Boston. Like, this event was, like, one of a kind, to be honest. Like, I don't even think it matches up against Boston. Just because I didn't even know, like, how hyped this event was until, like, towards the end of it. Because I thought this was normal. I thought this was a normal CS2 event. Like, the hype is fucking crazy. And, like, I understood, like, it being North America and, like, not, like, the story of me being on stage as the North American player. But it was... It's, it was very unreal. Like, I'd never experienced anything like that before. And, like, but in the past, when I say, like, wait, hold on, I'm clapping these kids real quick. All right. In the past, <laughs> in the past, when I was, um, when I say, like, I'm very grateful and I'm very thankful, it's almost like I, I am grateful and thankful, but it's, it's not like 100% what I say. It is what it is because sometimes it's just like another event you know like there was nothing that like stood out it's just like i'm happy to be there but you kind of get what i mean like it's not like 100 percent what i say it is it's kind of i don't know how to pronounce <laughs> it i don't shoot myself the, in the foot but no like dallas okay i'll just say dallas is just a totally different beast of an event like there's a lot of yeah there's some solid events here and there in europe and whatnot and like but, but every time I had worked Dallas and just the way that the crowd reacted, there's just a lot of energy there and it bleeds through to, to the desk, to the games, to everything. It's just, I mean, they're, they're like really, for whatever reason, Texas is just really strong when it comes to Counter-Strike love. And that's kind of why the Austin major coming up next year is super sick too for blast. Like I bet the crowd's going to be insane and that they're going to have it in like a 15,000 capacity arena too. Well, the thing is, I've been to Dallas, the Dallas event, and even then, it didn't feel like it was like the the one we, the one I won like maybe five years ago. Like I understand it's an NA and like the crowd and all that. Like the crowd, even then, it wasn't. I mean, you can't even say it was close to this because it wasn't. But mm. it, it's just like this event marks like as one of the best events in terms of even like uh like having the crowd and like how the crowd was i've been to many colognes i've been on stage in cologne and like maybe because the crowd is so far away but the event at dallas i would say the hype and everything is it's definitely up there like i think it was better than cologne i think it was better than boston i think it was better than <laughs> like a lot like i know i'm like maybe over exaggerating that's as wild but i feel i mean i felt it before in dallas too like people would ask me 
my favorite event. And I, I hadn't gone to the one that you won five years ago or whatever, but the post pandemic Dallas is just, it's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. I and mean, I bet it I don't know how to describe the it the way that I'm trying to describe it, but like, you know how, when you've been to like certain events, like what's the event that happens annually? that besides like Katowice, Cologne, like the very hype ones. Tr truthfully, I always saw, well, people also like Copenhagen for the fall finals, especially mm -hmm. if like Danish teams are in it. But uh, I mean, my my big three, actually, I think my favorite three are like fall finals in Copenhagen, Cologne and Dallas. I think the, for the annual events, I've really, really liked them. And then every major is always crazy, too. But yeah. Mm, okay, I guess like Sweden is probably like a place where like annually there's like events there, right? But not um, as big as uh, not as not as big anymore. There's no like there's no IEM Stockholm or anything like that. It's usually like a smaller event. Um, I guess we can even use Katowice for example. Like, I because when I kind of went more onto like better teams where we can actually make playoffs and all that, like early on, um, that's when VP just started to like disband and like kind of go their separate ways. So like Katowice kind of lost like their home team and all the Katowice's I've been to, even the even the best ones, like you, when you go to these events, I kind of expect it to be like, like that, you know, like there's not, like I don't expect it to be any crazier like the Boston Major or even like a very hyped Cologne event. Like, I kind of expect it to be the same, like, every time. And I felt like this Dallas event, like, you can have, like, the Dallas event there every year. But I am I feel like the way this specific Dallas event went, um, obviously, like, the storyline built it to that point. But, like, how, even if it was another storyline that was similar, I feel like the hype would not be at this level. I mean, it's fair to say, dude, that, like, as you being one of the most culturally impactful North American or just flat out Counter Strike players ever, that people were just like it didn't it didn't even make sense, okay? Because like that's what I'm saying. It didn't none of, none of this made any sense until it started happening, and then as we're watching this shit unfold, like I remember like watching it, when I was watching it live on the computer, I was like, this is not that's not this is not possible. This At is some point, not, you're just like, possible. yeah, it's actually happening. Yeah, like this is actually happening. Yeah, I think yeah. Every, everybody was just freaking out. Everybody was just freaking out completely. And I'm sure that energy was there. Yeah, it's very hard to describe the event. I mean, a lot of people have asked me already, and, like, it's honestly just an event that, like, you really had to be there to, like, understand, like, what type of event it was. Because I listened to, like, the crowd and everything through, like, these videos, and it does not do any of it justice whatsoever. No, nah, no way. Do you have a team? Right. Do you have a team coming up? Are you Whoa! Why are you I whispering it like we're off yeah. stream? Bro. Like, <laughs> we, we, we're all, we know we're on stream here. Yo, contract him, contract Jif on Twitter or anything? Is that gonna happen? Um, so I guess that kind of goes back to where like I'm kind of not putting myself out there. I guess completely. Um, I've always been like open to like whatever offers come my way. It's just about honestly, it's just about myself, and it has nothing to do like with really anybody um or anything um against me i guess but i think i'm just prioritizing a lot about myself these days and i feel like if the right offer comes where i feel like i can give my 100 percent and not you know uh kind of eventually like see problems that i didn't see before and kind of go this way where like i feel i can't do anything about it and kind of like have this dead team feeling i kind of want to avoid that as most as possible and like just kind of be with a group of people that is willing to grind and honestly like work together and just enjoy like the experience and the process of getting to where we want to get and just kind of yeah kind of like having that trust in each other you know i think that's like a big thing for me and that'll make my time more enjoyable and it'll make me give 100 percent and not like leave with regrets or anything like that um so I've always been open to it, but right now I'm definitely talking with a lot more people. Yeah. Um, I think opportunities will come, and maybe not the opportunities that I'm like like looking for completely, but I mean they're still good enough, and I think there's a chance that you'll see me again in the competition soon.
All right, one, one last thing. I know you're playing. I know you're playing. So like one last thing. So no, you're, good. you're at, you played at this level. How much, how much better are you going to be with like a few more r months of reps? Yeah. So even like at some point in the event, um, until like afterwards, um, Nico. So with them, they're very, Sorry, I was having a, but um, okay. when you go like they're not, they don't really say a whole lot. Like they won't tell me, they won't openly like say, like hey, like you were really good or like anything like that. Like they'll give like cues and like little remarks that like it speaks little but it speaks volume. That's kind of like who they are. And for me, I realized that they, they also thought I was really behind. And a lot of things that I tried to implement and like tell them that we needed, that I thought we needed, they thought that like we were just playing too much as a team and like they didn't want to play like that. Like even in the vlog they said that, but they didn't really include the context behind it. But um, I think even for a player like Nico to expect me to be behind, like after seeing that, like I just thought like, hey, like I can't really prove anything to anyone until like I actually like do something about it and show it um in my results but all throughout the event even when i started playing with them i feel like my baseline is like way higher than what people expect it to be and even like a player like nico didn't see that until the very end of the event so when i saw that i was like okay like i can't really say how far behind or like, like where i'm at as a player like i kind of just have to show it um but I think you give me one month of boot camp in Europe, like I will be over 50% in terms of like my IQ and understanding my decision making. Because even in the tournament, like I feel like my decision making more on the CT side was a lot better than what people think it actually is. And I felt most comfortable on the CT side. And I felt like when I actually got the chance to perform and they came to my site, like I felt like I kind of hold my own ground. But I just feel like I was in 50% that event mechanically and like in terms of decisions. So I felt like it's very hard to like judge it, but like, I mean, everyone kind of, that's the only thing everyone can judge it on. But I felt like my aim wasn't even close to being like what it used to be or like close to what it is like on stream or like whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you had I some, no you had some nice it. shots in this game. Like you had, you had some shots that, and just to, just cause of the stream title that you would hit. And then people were like, Hooksy would not hit those. So, I mean, even against other tier one pros, like, yeah, we all I know think, it could get better. Like, we saw your aim before, like, five years ago and stuff. I think um, in this situation, it's kind of funny because for me, when I came into this event, I just, I mean, where I left off was, like, EG, right? So I kind of expected, like, a lot of the comments, remarks, and everything to be, like, very hostile and, you know, how it's been already. And... I, that's why like I had this mindset of like coming in here and like just focus on myself because like what people say I really don't care about anyways and like why I let it like negatively affect me for some reason. So I have, was like, already blocking everything out but when I started like paying attention to like the socials it caught me by surprise because a lot of people like they saw my impact and they saw like what I provided and they understood that it was good enough and even though it doesn't say everything that it should be saying it just caught me off by surprise because when all the EG stuff happened, in my head, I was like, look, these guys have been seeing me grow in this scene for six, seven years, and they should know that every team I've been on, like, we win. And when I lead the team, like, it, there's, like, a, like a certain level drops, and maybe it gets back there, maybe it doesn't. But, like, you can definitely tell a certain level drops, and, like, the talk about, like, collecting paychecks and, like, all that stuff, like, I thought... Like, hey, like, people are going to see that shit. That shit's not true by knowing who I am in general. And then, like, they didn't see that in the beginning. And then I was like, what the fuck? Like, I guess it's not as obvious as people see it is. And then when I came to this event and everyone, like, I only saw good comments, not even, like, a drop of hate. And people were saying, like, I'm v being very impactful. Like, that showed, like, a different perspective of everything. And I was like, holy shit, like, this is unexpected. And then like, everything just became a fairy tale. But... I'm definitely confident in myself, like, especially at where CS2 is right now. Like, I don't think there's a clear number one winner. 
And I feel like this game, like, is anyone up for grabs right now? And going to that event, like, my confidence was, like, I was almost overdosed on confidence because I'm playing with Montesi and Nico, and, like, I know how good I am, and I'm like, bro, this is a championship team. Like, there's no doubt about it. But apparently for them, I mean, <laughs> it was a very big surprise, so. What kind, what kind of words exchange with uh, you and Montesi at the end of the event? At the end of the event? Yeah, after you won. Um, well... The thing is, even all throughout my teams and the interviews and stuff, there's like a level of PR that you kind of take into consideration. And okay. well, kind of like, it's not that they're lying about it. They're almost like sometimes over exaggerating it just because, you know, the PR and like all that stuff. It's, it's not a bad thing. I know I'm making it sound like a bad thing, but it's not. But um, with Monacy and like uh, Nico, like everything they said in the interviews, it's not something like I asked for, like we talked about at all. So the fact that they say those things, like I know it's genuine and I know that they actually mean it. So Monacy, I didn't get a chance to really say like goodbye to him um, after the event because everyone kind of just went downstairs and like we all kind of like went our own direction and there were like a lot of fans. So um, I was going out and he was still in the lobby somewhere and I was trying to find my way to him. I was trying to find like all the GT players and I couldn't find him and Taz, but I sent a message and then I mean, I sent a pretty like, what I said to him, like I meant, I pretty much meant it. I tried, I just tried to find a delivery where it wasn't like, it didn't make him feel uncomfortable, I guess. But I have a lot of respect for Monacy and the way he holds himself and just the humbleness that he has and how he puts himself on his own, how he holds himself to other people and players. Um, I have a lot of respect for him in that aspect. And I think he's like a lot on the right path. And a lot of like the stuff that I had issues with as an up and coming player, like I can see like he's very, he, he's like very on point with those things. So that's what caught me off guard a lot. And it makes me like him a lot more, but, um, our exchange afterwards, I pretty much told him like, hey, like you're one of the best players I've seen out there. And like the way you carry yourself, the way you hold yourself and even talking to your teammates and um, just how you respect them, no matter who they are, what they are, like um, is very rare to find. And I just told him that I thought he was on the right path and like he's got my support and only really wish him the best to be honest. And he's like one of the best experiences him and Nico, probably the best experiences I've ever had in CS2. And honestly, like, if we were to lose against Liquid, like, I still would have said the same. And at one point, I was actually thinking, like, fuck, bro, like, what am I going to tell these guys right now? Like, when, if we were to lose, like, how, like, the appreciation, appreciation for, like, the opportunity. Like, I, I don't know. There was something about Monesty and Nico that, like, I never felt that way before with like anybody to be honest like it felt pretty genuine like you can tell like the camaraderie's there the synergy's definitely clicking and i don't know just like the way we when we win and the way we see each other on stage like afterwards like you can tell it's not for show or it's not like for this specific moment it's just I don't know, we share a lot in common. I think we definitely have each other's backs. Like, I, I didn't spend a lot of time with him, with those guys, but I can definitely feel there's something there. There's, de there's a level of respect there for each other. That's sick. Yeah, that's sick. And, like, I didn't expect him to respond, to be honest. And, like, just by his response, like, the gist of it, like, he... You can really tell, like, everything's, like, genuine. Like, we loved playing with each other, and, like, we just loved, like, being there. Like, one thing... I. I don't like sharing like the private stuff, but one thing that I can share that Monacy told me, I mean, I, I'm only saying it because um, I watched it when I got back home, like his interview on the desk. He was saying that he really enjoyed this tournament. And like one thing he learned from me is to just really enjoy the moment. And like, no matter win or lose, like you gotta like really put a hundred percent and just enjoy the process and like the losses and the wins and like everything because in a blink of an eye like that shit is like six years gone mm. but um the fact that he says it and like the way he says it like you can tell like it definitely affected him so i'm glad that i can just like really leave like a mark on players like this so 
honestly, that's what I was very happy about leaving that tournament. Like just hearing the way they talk about me and knowing that it's not something I asked for them to do. And, you know. Yeah, I feel like it the, was kind of like the cherry on top of the Cinderella story. <laughs> I, I can just imagine that, though. I mean, the way that you bring a certain energy and just kind of like the intangibles of what you have versus kind of what G2 has shown to be for the last year. They probably needed somebody that could like just be, be a more a better moral leader or like just almost just because you have a, a level of self-confidence and you're not doubting yourself in a way and you even know like the last thing you want to do is doubt yourself and if anything from watching g2 games it's like they just get hung up on themselves sometimes yeah you can definitely tell and i realized that like after like midway through the tournament where just like me being able to be myself kind of brought like this level of energy for them that they i can tell they needed it and i can tell that when things are tough it's more about like them believing in themselves because in the beginning of the tournament i was li literally even telling nico like bro like i think you're forgetting who you are man like you're fucking nico and you're fucking monacy like yeah. sometimes you got to remember who the fuck you guys are and like what you guys can do in this game yeah and who the fuck is wonderful like because <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know who my sports was and nico is like talking about their system like how well they play off each other and i'm like looking at this paper this like roster on paper like who the fuck are these guys like this is the best team in the world like i'm over here like reading the names i'm just like nico like you know who you're talking about right now and you know who they're talking about right now like they're talking about nico monacy and you're talking about exertion being like the be better system than you like do you know what you're saying and i guess it's, that's like that level of confidence that i can bring for them and kind of like make them less scared i guess but, that's what I'm fucking talking about. That's what I'm fucking talking actually, about. in terms of energy, like there was a point in the playoffs where I was like, dude, like I, I, it's running low right now. Like I can feel I'm so drained. Like in the when we made that comeback against um, Vitality and Anubis, in my head there was a round where it was almost. I think Nexa got three kills running through the smoke, and in my head it was almost like, yeah, holy yeah, shit, like, thank yeah. God. Like in my head when we won, I was like thank god like i couldn't even let out a scream but like i remember on the side of my vision like i see like nico and monsi getting like really hyped and i was like dude like low key that it, that helped me a lot right there just like not needing me to do that and someone else did it unconsciously like it spread the energy for sure yeah i bet like g2 just feel, always just felt like a team that needs to play itself into a good level of confidence instead of actually just being able to summon it yeah, honestly, this event, like, there's so much that I can talk about, like, I can talk about it all day long, and there's, like, it's very hard to really put into words, like, how I felt this event, but, I mean, like I said, it's just an event that, it was one of the best events of my life, to be honest, and nothing can really, like, top it, like, even the Grand Slam, the, the Major and all that, like, this event is, like, separate on its own. Okay, okay, did you think about when you won, jumping up on the table? Yeah, I mean, even, like, before the walkout, people were saying, like, hey, like, Nico's got to carry you, like, Tarek, and, like, all those things, and, like, we were kind of, like, planning that before, and the way I felt was kind of, like, how the event was going for me, like, I kind of stayed in the present at all times, like, even, like, the days before, like, the big games and any of the playoffs games, like, I didn't even, there are split seconds where I'm thinking about it, and I just instantly think, like, hey, like, don't think about anything, like, just literally stay in the moment like don't worry about what's gonna happen what might happen what might not and just fucking go as it's going and i remember like going that like, like having that mindset going into it and going forward like they were talking about like carrying me on the shoulders blah 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 and i was like hey like <laughs> that's not something we planned let's just let's just go on the fly like whatever happens happens and we let it happen and even after the game like it's not something we planned where nico's gonna pick me up like we we didn't even talk about it. I even said no, like, nah, you're not gonna pick me up. We gotta make this shit like natural, you know? Like, don't force <laughs> nothing. Okay. And okay, okay. like after we won, he was like, yeah, fuck it, bro, get over here, blah blah blah, and then, like he picked me up and all that stuff. I know Nico, like he doesn't say a whole lot, but like even after the tournament, like when we were like really having our own moment, like he in the end he said something like, "Man, you are like one crazy motherfucker, bro." Like I know him saying that, like that says a whole, like it says the world, so. Getting that from Nico, I'm like, dude, my career might be complete now, bro. 
Yeah. <laughs> my goat, my goat saying I'm crazy. Let's go. That's fucking dope. I. All right. Thank, I thanks. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for thanks for hopping on, dude. Thanks for explaining hey, everything. Man. It was I, fun. It was fun. You, yeah, you let me know when you need me, bro. You just hit, shoot a message over, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Are right, you still bro. living in California? Um, right now, yes. I'm in SoCal. I'm in Orange County right now. Oh, word. Dope. All right, All cool right. then. I'll catch you around. You Peace, let me man. know. Later.